Cool. So, this is this, this isn't working now. Um, so, effectively, what the foundation exists to do is to advance the people who manage the value of cloud. Yes, we need data, we need technology, we need tooling, we need all this other stuff, but fundamentally we focus on the individuals themselves who operate within this space. Um, cloud presents an interesting problem. It is a unique and very new problem for technology consumption and investment in general, right? First of all, it's decentralized. The traditional model of purchasing and investing in technology is broken by public cloud. Okay? We are no longer in a space where procurement gets to decide what POs they cut this month. We're no longer in a space where finance is able to put together a 12-month forecast of quarterly spending and go through that capacity forecasting and just know what we're spending. Because actually what's happening is that every single DevOps engineer who is writing code, who is building cloud, is spending money. The moment you deploy, your, your bill is being paid for by the second. Okay? And that, if that's a commitment that engineers are making. Right? It's highly variable. Cloud is billed per second. In some cases, per millisecond. Right? And that variable cost spend responds to demand from the organization, innovation, and so on. It responds to demand from external, from customer mm -hmm. demand. It responds to all sorts of there are various different fluctuations. So it's very difficult to effectively predict and forecast using the traditional model of, well, the, the line looked like this last month, we'll just do a dotted line and make it continue. It's, that just doesn't work, right? It's also massively scalable. I worked with um, a major broadcasting firm, NBCU and Sky, and we built a platform to provide Peacock TV to the US we went from pretty much zero, like sandbox stuff, through to 10 million user capacity in eight months from nothing. Do that in a data center that didn't exist when you began, right? That's incredible levels of scale. It's, it releases power that we've never had before in technology. So that means so does the cost scale as well. So this is a fun slide. This is actually a revamped slide from concept that I've been teaching to for a couple of years now, and this is kind of brand new. Uh, it used to be called the rise of cloud, and it is now kind of the ongoing rise of cloud and how this is going to work. So basically, back when, in the good old days, when it was very, very fixed cost, very capex, very forecastable, lots of depreciation and lots of assets. And, we know this world very well, and it fits quite nicely and neatly into EBIT tile and all this other stuff. I've learned finance for it. Okay. <clears throat> 2013, we started to see people who were really early on exploring this public cloud monster and discovering that actually you need a different approach. So we started seeing early adopters and early creators, people like Adobe, Atlassian, Airbnb. Apparently, there were companies that didn't begin with A that also were doing it. But um, those are the three that I've got on that list. But yeah, effectively, we started to realize that this was a discipline that required a different approach. Right? And I guess, no feedback from the board. Back in 2016 was when we started to sort of to shape and structure what this thing films is as a concept, as a discipline. Right? I'm flying through this rather rapidly because I lost a lot of time. 2019. The O'Reilly Cloud FinOps book came out, J.R. Stallman and Mike Fuller, and they wrote the uh, first kind of, I guess, sort of seminal document of the book that defines the way that we operate and the way that we, we do these things. Since then, I would say it's more evolved faster and at a bigger scale since then than any really day up to that point. Since the release of that book, we've now got 2020, we have the, the fact that FinOps Foundation joined the Linux Foundation, we're now a project within the Linux Foundation, right? And we've, we've also since then now released all sorts of extra stuff that I'm going to show you in a moment, which is super cool. Um, this number here, by the way, so this was forecast by IDG and Gartner, who were, they were pretty all part close. And that was done back in 2019. They thought that by this year, we'd see about $360 billion of global cost of spend at stake as a result of public power. 
Today, we we'll, we'll, we'll be talking about that before we got the slides up, so I'm not going to talk about that. They were slightly wrong. They were ever so slightly out. Um, actually, we're seeing already 500 billion spent this year in, in, in that state in, in public land. Um, which is a lot of money. And uh, that's even more money. The forecast was very recently 1.5 trillion by 2025, cost of the state. It went up by $300 billion, which is a lot of money. Um, it was now $1.8 trillion. Every forecast so far that anybody has created about cost at stake of public power has been inaccurate and has been nowhere near big enough. We should tell you the idea about the rate of, rate of adoption of public power, the rate, the rate of spend increase in that space. So I'll kind of later that later back on quite a lot. How do we solve this problem? Well, FinOps is an evolving, and I've just kind of touched on that fact that we're continuing to grow and building and evolving. We are still, right now, in the middle of writing, that's not my laptop, in the middle of writing more documentation to support more capability, more information, but we're evolving this cloud financial management discipline and a cultural practice. This is really pro predominantly about people, like I said at the beginning. This is about how we behave, how we open and take, and take accountability for what we do with our technology. We enable organizations to get maximum business value by helping engineering, finance, and business teams, and everybody else, by the way, to collaborate together using data as the basis of our decisions, using data as our common currency and our common sort of set of reference. It's important to be able to use this enormous amount of information that we have available to us to drive valuable conversations to shape our business directions, which is actually harder than the sound. So I said before we got slides, I said there was a slide. There is, there it is, there we go. Um, our mission is to advance the people who manage the value of cloud through community, education, and best practices. Uh, I talked at the beginning, we've got like 7,000 members now. We also have jobs.finops.org now, so there's now a jobs board for us. Um, and we're also supporting through talent development, through training, mentoring, as well as certification. And we also build best practice. We've got so many we've got working groups developing things as broad and diverse as government cloud, which we've just, we've just put out a really good working uh, playbook for that. It's really good. We've got a really active sustainability community focusing in, in on green ops and fit ops dovetailing together and understanding how to challenge cloud providers in being more accurate with their carbon footprint and emissions data so that we as consumers of, of those environments can own our um, carbon footprint uh, data more effectively. We've got an automation working group because who wants to sit there and do the same task twice, right? So we've got a whole bunch of things defining best practices, defining good working groups, good, good outcomes. We also we've got we've open billing standards because there are no two cloud providers that give you the same kind of data, which is a headache. So providing a sort of like a template to say, actually, you know what, if you just do that, it makes sense. The framework, I said it was evolving. I'm not going to talk to this entire slide. This slide, by the way, is a two-day training course in one slide, pretty much. Right? So I'm not going to spend two days talking through it. What I want to call out are these six principles. Those effectively are the guiding star of how any FinOps practice should act. Those are the principles that guide our decisions. And right at the top is collaboration. We have to stop the concept of having fences and having separate sort of siloed groups and separate behavior and accountability. There needs to be mutual support, mutual collaboration and understanding between different lines of business so we can share that understanding and gain from it. We have to own cloud usage. What's ownership mean? Ownership for me means not only am I responsible for fixing it the brakes. I used to be a data center engineer, I know that well very well. Not only do I have to fix it the brakes or make sure that it performs the job it needs to perform, but also I should understand what it's up to, what it's doing, what impact its existence is having on my business, right? If I own an infrastructure and it's burning through five times the amount of money that it's earning, that's an issue I should be responsible for because I built it. 
right? So ownership is really important. Centralized team, we're actually rewording that. And we're saying that a centralized practice, that might not be a dedicated team. It actually might be a matrix of individuals who all have sort of two hats to wear. But ultimately, the important point is that this needs to be a centralized approach rather than a giant with various ideas and solutions and things happening here there and everywhere. We need to come together to build this as a, as a holistic approach within our businesses. But reports, I'm not a fan of the word report, data. Data needs to be both accessible and timely. Anybody, fun fact on data, anybody got any idea how many, how many lines of data it takes to make Microsoft Excel part and, and break? Any guess? Four million lines. Four million lines of data, and it doesn't matter how much resource you've got on your machine, Microsoft Excel just won't load the data, it will, die, it will just fall apart. Most cloud bills blow that way out of, out of the water. Most cloud bills are way bigger than that. So managing the data this is not a Microsoft Excel exercise. Right? Being able to get that data in a, in, a, in a position whereby an engineer can look at the outcome, look at the graph and understand what the outcome of their decision was last week, and know what action they need to take this week, quickly is important. That's a challenge. And there are lots of various providers and solutions trying to solve that challenge. My humble opinion is that most people are close. I don't think anybody is ex exactly perfect, but it's, again, what questions do you want to ask of your data? But the data needs to be accessible, it needs to be clear, and it needs to be timely. There is no value in spending three weeks refining the data to give to your team, because in that time, what you're looking at has changed so much that it's effectively worthless. Um, and the last two kind of go together for me, right? So going back to that point about accessible type of data, that data should drive decisions, and those decisions should take advantage of this variable model, right? And with relatively modern cars, most modern cars these days have got a little economy dial on them. It's called Prius, Prius effect. You put your foot down, the economy dial drops, and you start to think about the remortgaging of your house that you're going to need to do to pay for the next fuel, fuel tank full of gas. Same kind of thing, right? You see the needle go down, you see the reaction to your input, and you want to make a change to that input. Your car doesn't say to you, drive more economically. You just know that if you lift your foot, your economy goes up, and it feels good because you're spending less. Same kind of idea here, right? There's lots of other pieces on this, but I'm not going to talk to you because I don't have time to. But what I want to just very briefly do is touch on these six different domains at the bottom here. And if you think about what they, what those could, could contain and entail, they're very different skill sets that need to be adopted. There's no such thing as a FinOps practitioner that has a specific career background that you can say, you can look at somebody's career history on LinkedIn and say, that would be a good FinOps person or they wouldn't be a good kind of person. Because actually, there's a lot of capabilities. I'm not going to go through this. But there's a lot of capabilities that are very different in their skill sets and their requirements that are required to come together in order for all of these sort of, this, this accountability and ownership and understanding and insight to happen. Right? We need governance. We need policy and governance. And I sound integration. But we need to educate people. We need to work with finance and integrate what's going on in cloud with what's going on with the rest of the business finance, which probably doesn't happen on a per second billing basis. That's a question. Go. Where do kind of funding models sit in this? Because traditionally in organizations we think about projects yes. which have an end. Yes. In cloud, things don't end. No, you're right. You know, if there's services, yeah. you need to think about the changing the funding model. So where does that sit in the program? Yeah, so it's that would come within sort of the bud forecasting budget management okay. and also within um, you know, within kind of the, the, the charge by compliance integration. <laughs> There's also different pieces that talk about so sometimes there are cloud projects. Right? Sometimes there'll be a project that will be a service that will be available for a short piece of time, or there'll be a, a gap fill service or whatever it's going to be. And that may maybe does the same point. Right? Or there might be a stepping stone migration pathway where you do a lift and shift from the data center or you VM, but you eventually want to go fully serverless. Like you want. There are, the answer to quote one of our men, one of our staffers is it depends. Um, anybody who's ever been on a call with, with Rob Martin will hear that, I guarantee you. But um, yeah. So what does, this, what does it look like when we get it right? Well, actually, it turns out there's lots of benefits that have got nothing to do with cloud spend, which is quite cool. 
Um, we actually see, and this is something which we hear from a lot of enterprises that have adopted this, that actually it lifts the overall sort of morale, it over lifts the ethos of goodwill of the business when you start to, when people start to feel like they really own what they're doing, and they can prove with data that they've done a good thing. Um, I used to be a consultant doing this kind of thing, and one of the companies I was consulting with, a manager came to me and said, you've given me an interesting problem. One of my engineers has just proven to me that uh, he's taken 40 grand a month off of our pill, and he wants some. <laughs> and I was like, give him some. <laughs> give, him, give him some. Buy him a pizza, I don't know, give him the grand. But um, yeah, it creates this great feeling of ownership and accountability and power that engineers like. And also, not just engineers, procurement, who up until this point maybe feel a little bit left out of the circle, and then suddenly are involved in contributing to decisions about commitments and so on and so forth, using the data to provide. Again, we've talked about breaking down the silos quite a bit. But quite a bit. We talked about accountability and auditability, <coughs> being able to prove when the money went, when and why. Um, one of the things we do within the foundation with the train, train courses is that we do an elevator pitch. And one of the best elevator pitches I've heard, sadly it wasn't mine, was where somebody said, look, FinOps allows you to point to every dollar that you've spent and say, I meant to spend it, which is difficult to do in cloud. I meant to spend it. I know what I spent it on, I know why I spent it, and it got me this. I mean, it sounds like a very basic business sentence. I know what I spent my money on, and it was worth spending, and it got me a good thing. That's quite difficult to do in this situation. Okay? More predictable cloud spend. When you apply context to what you're spending, and you apply visibility to the projects and forecasts and roadmaps, you can actually turn out predict with a pretty good accuracy levels. Budget versus actual for like a mature FinOps practice is within 3%, 3 to 5% of accuracy, budget versus, budget versus actual, budget versus actual, which is pretty good. And it also speeds up innovation and reduces your cost of mistakes. Because if you can see what they're spending, then they're not going to be turned on by It is being broadly adopted by pretty much everybody. Expectation is, from surveys that we conducted, about 80% of enterprise large size businesses are going to have some form of FinOps practice or team or responsibility process by next year. And that's not us, that's IDC said that. Who's doing it? Sounds like quite a few people are doing it. A lot of logos on that. And what strikes me as really surprising with this particular slide is how varied the logos are. We have a bank next to a car manufacturer, next to a cosmetics company, a sports equipment. <coughs> so it's kind of really not a remit that exists within one particular industry. If you are using public cloud, you need to have a format to own this span and own this data. One cool thing that we got from our recent state of Philips survey, which if you want to look at, there's an enormous amount of data, by the way. If you go to data.philips.org, we've just very recently, a couple of weeks ago, launched that, this year's one. And there's an enormous amount of information on there about who's doing it, where, what, that, what size of what size of power spend is happening, even down to salaries. What are you paying your films people? What's the right level of job? And what's the who's who to report to? All this stuff, right? But look at this. Financial services currently are just edging ahead as the biggest adopter of this of this practice. Global. Well, IT is rapidly catching. But financial services are really growing this muscle very successfully and delivering some serious products. So, yeah. I would encourage everybody to have a look at that in terms of kind of how it's been being represented across the industry. <clears throat> so going back, cast your mind back to that graph I showed you earlier on about the, the, the rapid rise in spend in public cloud. Kind of seeing that mirror here with people who are working in this industry. So I mean, I started doing FinOps sort of consulting stuff back in 2019, 
And there really wasn't very many people talking about it at that time. And one of the, one of the most frequent things I would hear from people is, I don't, I don't understand why I need this. It turns out that stopped happening. So people now understand why this is necessary. But this is growing at an absolutely exponential rate. It's, it's, it's surprising, actually. We have a Slack chat within our Slack workspace called Jobs. And um, up until, well, basically most of this year, we've seen about 125 or people posting per month in that space, advertising roles. So it's, like, it's really hard to find people. So if you want to be one of those people, one of the things that we do within the foundation is we're funded, we're a non-profit foundation, and we are funded primarily through delivering training and community support. Right? <coughs> if you sign up to, to do one of these courses, um, there is a small chance you might be unlucky enough to be stuck with me teaching you, so I apologize in advance for that. But, yeah, effectively, we deliver these two levels of training, but there's a lot more besides the solar based training being built out specifically targeted towards engineers, we're building both persona based training for finance, for executives, product owners, all that kind of stuff. This is all in the process of happening, right? The engineering ones are available. Um, this is a pretty cool yellow badge, and there's quite a few people have seen this happen a lot on LinkedIn, people are posting these badges. It is turning into kind of an industry standard in terms of the level of the certification required. Um, if you go to learn.films.org, you'll see a whole bunch of content on there. Hold it before that. You'll see a whole bunch of content on there, which will help you to make your choice. You can either do this as an instructor-led course or as a self-paced course with video content as well. So I would advise, I would recommend people have a look at that if you want to learn more about it. Um, and if you can't afford it, we've actually now got a scholarship fund. So if you if you are struggling to pay for those for the training course, apply for the scholarship fund. Email training at Phillips Little, and uh, the awesome space and case will, will sort you out. And yeah, we're looking for we support diversity with supporting students, supporting people who don't have the needs or the means to afford that training. So we're making it as accessible on purpose, as accessible as possible. And the very last thing that I will do because I'm running out of time is talk about this, which is Kevin mentioned very briefly, but. Uh, to sort of get more people early on. This is a new program, which we launched only, only very recently. I think we went actually public live this week, last week. Yeah, a couple of weeks ago. So this is a new program. So previous slide was about individuals, right? And the people specifically doing training individually. Yeah. This treat this sort of scales that up and treats an enterprise as an entity that needs to be collectively coached and collectively educated. There's lots of other stuff going on within that. So I've got somebody waving a red stop flying at me, so I'm going to look through very, very briefly. And say, I did mention, before we got the slides working, I did mention that uh, there's a lot of working groups. There are lots of working groups. If there's any of this stuff lights your candle, and you're interested in getting involved, come and join. If you join as a practitioner, as an individual, it costs you precisely nothing join. It is free as a practitioner. So if you want to come and get involved and you join these conversations, please do. Last thing I will say is if you want to have a chat about this any more than that, please reach out to me. It's a terrible photograph of me. Um, but there we go, this that's me. And you can join us at philips.org slash membership if you want to.